Hello again, everybody. This is Derek, and I am coming back at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about actions. Now, if you've already been through our boot camps, but if you haven't been to the previous boot camps, I recommend hitting them first so that you can follow along with the chapters in order. Uh, like the first one, we talk about preparing for battle, getting your forces ready and things like this. And then in the second video, we talked about the battalion and its troop ratings. And then the following video, we did deploying the battalion and combat patrols. And in the last video, we talked about the game turn and command and control. And of course, in this video, we're going to be talking about the various different actions. All right. So the player, that's you, uses either your company or headquarters orders to order your units to undertake actions. Okay. So every turn, you're going to roll dice and determine how many company orders you have, but it'll also determine if you are granted any battalion headquarters orders. I have two orders marked on my battalion headquarters, and that can go from zero to six. So a, a six-headed die is perfect for representing that. Now, company orders, I'm using wooden blocks to represent my company orders. So in my discard pile, I'll have a stack of these green blocks. And then each turn, as I roll, every turn you roll to see how many orders you receive. And if I receive six orders, I'll make sure that I have six blocks and I will make and I will keep them uh, in a in a convenient location to keep track of how many orders I have. Now, when you're issuing orders, which orders and actions, they're not interchangeable. These are how many orders you have, but some actions require more than one order. These are orders you use to spend to perform actions. And you can use any combination of your company orders or your battalion orders. They're interchangeable. But the battalion orders, you can save stockpile from turn to turn. Your battalion orders also influence your initiative. So sometimes it's better to hold on to these orders if you want to have a larger plus for your initiative. But if you ever need an extra order or two or three or whatever, you can dig into your battalion order allotment. So the player uses his available pool of headquarters, that's this, and company orders, that's that, to permit actions. You nominate a unit, you state what action he is being ordered, and then you issue the orders uh, to that unit, and you can uh, issue orders to any unit in any order that you see fit. So if I want to have this guy go first, and then this guy go second, you can do that. Or if I'd prefer to have this guy go first, and this go second, whatever you'd like to do. There is a limit, we'll get, well, there is a limitation, we'll get to that. Each action has an order cost. Anything from one to three orders. If insufficient orders are available for a particular action, then it cannot be undertaken. There's no limit on the action types that you can order per phase or turn except for artillery and mortars, which are limited to one action per turn. Okay, so if you go back into the turn, uh, the video we talked about the turn, there's two phases for uh, performing actions. There's the attacking phase or the, or the offensive phase, and then there's the defensive phase. If you issue orders to your units during the offensive phase, let's say your first player, but you 
didn't use all your orders, whatever you, and then at the end of your offensive phase, you can elect to stop. And then what happens is you pick up all of your orders and then the play passes to your opponent and your opponent starts issuing his orders. But because you've saved a couple of orders, you can now use those during his turn for reaction orders. We'll get into that. Uh, and you would pick up all the orders that you've issued so that uh, it'll denote that they haven't received any new orders in the defensive phase. And if you go second and you issue orders as reactive it, on your turn, when the turn passes over to yourself, you still refresh, clean everything off, and then you only have what you have left over. There's no command radius to limit actions. So you could have a guy halfway across the table, you can still issue an order. Unless you're issuing what's called a company commander order, which is a special type of order. And if that's the case, it can only be issued to someone within 18 inches. Now, a company commander can issue its order even if it's moved, rallied, or been used as a spotter. Okay, so let me let me try to explain this without moving on. I'm going to do it uh, off, the, off the cuff. If I issue an order to my company commander where he gets to move, let's say, and then I do all my normal orders, right, for all my units that I'm going to issue orders to, and I do them one at a time, and I'll save those. So let's say I move all three of these guys, just hypothetically. I can still issue what's called a company commander order, and all that's a special type of order, and I would just mark the company commander with what I'm using as a yellow block, if I letting me know that I'm about to authorize a company commander action. It's not an actual order. It's kind of like a it's a once per turn additional order. So now he has a limited number of things he can do using that order. But every company commander gets one per turn, not per phase. So when you do the refresh and you clean all your orders up, you still leave that there because he's already issued his company commander order. And then at the end of the turn, you refresh it, and then he'll be able to do issue another company commander order on the following turn. But we'll get into that. We'll get into company commander orders and, and, and the like. Okay, so infantry platoons operate as a single unit. Okay, so this is an infantry platoon. It has three sections in it. Um, you do not issue, on an infantry platoon, you do not issue orders to individual sections, right? I'm not, I'm not issuing orders like that. Um, what you do is you issue an order to the platoon, and the platoon performs that action. Armored fighting vehicles and guns and heavy weapons can be either set up as a platoon or you can have them set up as sections and in that case they would be issued individual orders. Alright, so here's the procedure. The phasing player, now remember there's the phasing player which, which I call the offensive player and then you have the defensive player, which is the non-phasing player, issues one action at a time to his units. He selects a unit and states what action it will undertake. I'm going to have, like, these are my five actions, let's say, or five orders. I might say, I'm going to have them do X. Placing an order marker next to the unit to indicate it is being issued an action this phase. I'm going to issue them an action. Once given the order, the unit carries out its actions, such as 
firing, moving, close combat, before moving on to the next unit. So you don't go, you don't go, okay, I'm going to have these guys move, I'm going to have these guys move, and I'm going to have this tank fire. No, you don't do that, right? You don't pre-allocate. You do one at a time. You go, I'm going to have this guy fire, and, what, and then you roll the dice, you make your attacks, you do all that, and once it's done, then you go, I'm going to have this guy move. You move him, then you go, I'm going to have this guy attack, etc. You get the idea. player can decide whether to use headquarters orders or company orders. Both types are identical. It is permitted to use both order types combined for more expensive actions. Because remember, some actions require more than one order. As an example, if you order an artillery action, but only have one remaining company order, you can add one of your headquarters orders to pay for it. Because the artillery firing at a new location requires two. And we'll get into the orders. Now, when you're performing your orders, your opponent can react to these actions using a react action, but only in the following situations. It's pretty straightforward. Your possible reactions to the active enemy unit fires or moves and is in line of sight of your units. If I decide to move these guys and if I had someone that could react to it, I have two options. On movement, you can react during the movement or you can wait till he finishes movement. Now, when it comes to firing, you have to wait till he finishes firing. So your possible reactions is if he fires or moves. A reacting unit may fire or move after an enemy unit has finished all of its current move and or fire actions. Now, if you want to attack someone while they are in the middle of their movement, that's called opportunity fire. And that's like an interrupt. You fire at them during their movement. And you have to use... Uh, there, there's a die roll to be able to perform that. Um, when we get to the actions, the, the react actions, we'll talk about that. And you can only respond against an active enemy unit. You cannot react against any other enemy units. So if I'm moving this guy, you can't say, hold on, I'm going to shoot that guy. No, it has to be the one that's performing the action. And you have to be able to have a line of sight on it. Uh, that's pretty much a given. Okay, action limits. A unit may normally only undertake one action per phase. So I can't say, I'm going to give this guy an order to move. And then I'm going to give this guy another order to move. And I'm going to give this guy another order to move. No, you can't do that, right? He, he gets one action might cost more than one order but he gets one action per phase now a unit may receive the company commander order if using the com company commander order you can perform a second action so like i can issue this guy an order i can move them and then i can say okay i've decided to use my once per turn company commander order to be able to give him another action. There's a limit to that. It's a variable role to see how many orders it takes to perform that second action. And we'll obviously we'll get into that. And so what that means is a unit will only maximum with the company commander order receive two orders in that phase. And in the next phase, remember, you're going to clean these off. And if you have any reactions, you can issue a reaction to them. And But you can't do a second reaction because you've already used your company commander. Order. All right, now we're going to talk about the actual actions. All right, the first order is called fire and move. The fire and move order only call, I mean, action only requires one order. One unit, platoon or section, so infantry platoon or heavy weapons section 
or a platoon of tanks or what have you, can be ordered to fire and move, comma, move and fire, or just move, or just fire. So it's fire slash move in any combination. So you can move and fire, you can shoot and then move. One advantage of shooting then moving is that you might shoot an opponent, it might suppress them, so now they can't shoot back or react, and then you get to move. Um, whereas if you decide that you want to move first, they could react to that movement and maybe shoot you and maybe suppress you. So sometimes it's better to shoot first, but maybe you want to close the range and get into close range before you shoot. That's a decision you'll have to make. Now, company commanders, FOs, and combat patrols also use this action to move. However, combining movement and firing incurs a firepower and two-hit negative. So there's a penalty to moving and firing. So sometimes it's better just to sit and fire or just do a move. Now, rapid move. Units may choose to use a rapid move by sacrificing their fire option. If you're just going to move, you might as well rapid move. And we'll talk about that in the second half of the video when we talk about movement. Assault. Units may use this action to assault. One infantry platoon can be commanded to charge into close combat, go tank hunting, or a tank unit can initiate an overrun attack. The unit may fire and assault or simply assault. And all the assaults are done in a later chapter, and we'll get into that. Now, restriction. Non-radio tank platoons. Both platoon sections must act in unison by moving in the same direction and face in the same direction. So if you have an armored platoon, and if it's pre-1943 or whatever the uh, non-radio rule is for the nationality you're playing, they have to stay within a certain number of inches to be considered a platoon, and they have to move together much like an infantry platoon. So move and fire is the most common order that you're going to see given, and it only costs one. Okay, the next one is called deploy. This is another one you're going to be using quite a bit. This action is used to deploy combat patrols or deploy reserve units. You may do one of the following, and this also only costs one order. Deploy a combat patrol onto the table within 18 inches of a steady commander within his assigned sectors. Combat patrols cannot be deployed within 18, eight, I'm sorry, within eight inches of an enemy unit or enemy combat patrol. I could say I want to put a combat patrol in the edge of this rough terrain. You spend this action and deploy the combat patrol. That's a deploy action. As long as it's within 18 inches of your combat, I'm sorry, your company commander, and it's more than eight inches from your enemy units or combat patrols, you're fine. Or the, the deploy action can be to deploy a reserve unit onto either the rear table edge or a reserve infantry or heavy weapon platoon, a single AFE reconnaissance or light gun section onto a combat patrol. Okay, so this is kind of verbose, but what it's basically saying is if you already have a combat patrol deployed, right, from, from a previous turn, you can deploy a reserve infantry unit. I have to put one of my stands directly in the center of that combat patrol and take this guy off the table, put him back in my reserves, and then I can put the rest 
of the infantry having been deployed and that would cost them the one action. Now there are other things, I mean that's what you're going to do 99% of the time, but there are other things that you can put on there. You can put a heavy weapon platoon like a machine gun or, or a light mortar. Those are considered heavy weapons. You can put those there because an anti-tank gun is not considered a heavy weapon. It's considered a gun. So you can put like infantry or heavy weapons, which are kind of like infantry, just carrying weapons that are really heavy. You could also do a single AFE reconnaissance. So if you had in your reserves a reconnaissance element, I could have put it down. Or if you have a light gun, you can put it down. And remember, a light gun is anything 70 millimeters or less, or 75 millimeter pack howitzer counts as a light gun. Towed light guns, like this one might be, and heavy weapons in light trucks or carriers can also deploy on a combat patrol. So I could take that and deploy it onto that combat patrol. Or if I had my heavy weapons in the back of a truck, I could deploy that on a combat patrol. Now remember that a platoon of three or more bases will require two transports. So it would not be allowed to deploy on a combat patrol because you can't deploy, you can only deploy one truck. Company commanders and FOs may accompany a deploying unit for free or even deploy by themselves. So let's say I have a company commander off table and I'm planning on deploying the infantry as in the very first example, I could bring in my company commander at the same time for free. Now, deploying onto a combat patrol uses up all of your movement, but you may still fire, because remember you can have move and fire. Units must deploy at least one section in the center of the combat patrol, already said that, and deploying on a combat patrol is not considered a second action if the combat patrol has already moved in this phase, as the combat patrol is a separate unit to the deploying patrol. Okay, so let me try to explain this. It's pretty simple. Let's say I decide I want to move these guys into there. So I give them an order, I move them into there, and then with another order, I decide I want to deploy this platoon onto that combat patrol. And that would be my second order, but only one order for this guy. This order might as well be picked up with the unit as you put him back into reserves. Because the combat patrol is considered a separate unit from the unit that's deploying. Deploying on the table edge like you're having to move in from the table edge, is classed as beginning of movement, and the player may decide to move on using either move and fire or rapid move, which still all falls under the fire and move order. Okay, now remember, if you're impacted by interdiction, which happened during deployment, and that lasts a number of turns, if you're side is still impacted by the opening barrage, if you're trying to deploy reserves onto a combat patrol, your opponent rolls a d6, and on a score of four or more, your deployment is prevented. That still uses the order. So let's say I've got my combat patrol there, and I wanted to deploy this unit onto that combat patrol, I say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to use a deployment order 
to deploy this infantry platoon on that combat patrol and my opponent rolls a die and he gets a four or better stopping me, I can still issue another order to deploy again. But then he gets to roll again. And I can keep issuing orders until it actually succeeds or until I run out of orders or decide to stop. All right, so the next order is called Rally. Okay, so Rally only takes one order. Let's say my unit had three shock on it. This action is used to rally off shock and recover suppressed units. The action can be used by infantry, armor fighting vehicles, and gun platoons, or individual heavy weapons, AFV, or gun sections. The player states if he's combining rally off one shock with move or fire, or if he's just going to try for three. Okay, so rallying off one shock if the troop rating roll is passed. One shock is rallied off, and the unit may then move or fire. If the roll is failed, the unit may either rally off one shock or move or fire. When you're doing just one shock, you're, if you're going to move or fire with the rally roll, you're guaranteed to at least remove one shock. Right? It's a guarantee. But the rally roll determines if you're going to be able to get a move and fire or a move or fire. Now, when using this option, apply a minus one fire, I'm sorry, yeah, minus one die firepower or a minus one to hit if you're using the anti-tank firing in a rapid move is not allowed. Okay, so that's rallying with movement and firing. Now the second half of it is I could rally off three shock. You roll the three dice and for each successful troop rating pass you rally off one shock. No fire is permitted. Units may also withdraw 1d6 inches if a suppressed unit fails to rally off any shock when using the three dice rule, it immediately retreats. Now, company commanders and FOs recover, fully recover from being suppressed on one successful rally roll. So, if he's got three shock and I make one roll, this all comes off. Company commanders and FOs are a little bit more, um, they're a little braver, I guess. Okay. Armored fighting vehicle platoons can rally off shock from just one section or spread the rallies across both sections. Now, if you want, you can use a company commander order to perform a rally. And if you do, you can reroll one failed D6 roll. So you have a better chance of getting a success. Reconnaissance. Okay, reconnaissance is a little is a little tricky, so let's try to break it down. It costs one order to do a reconnaissance. I'm gonna put it on that recon half track. So I can either exchange a reconnaissance section for a combat patrol. So no matter where I'm at on the table, if I want to put, if I want to deploy a combat patrol from my half track or whatever reconnaissance vehicle I'm using, jeeps, motorcycles, uh, whatever, whatever the reconnaissance element is, and then I can deploy my combat patrol anywhere within three inches of the reconnaissance section. Let's see, I put it there. I would put the order on the combat patrol, the reconnaissance section 
is removed from play. So you put him in the discard pile. He doesn't go back to reserves. Okay, so basically, I, like I was saying in a couple of videos ago, I can take a reconnaissance section, I can run it all the way across the table, and then in a following turn, I can deploy a combat patrol and get rid of the vehicle. Maybe it's a Jeep, maybe it's whatever it is. But that'll allow this combat patrol to deploy more than 18 inches from my company commander because I'm using a combat patrol or because I'm using reconnaissance. Or one reconnaissance unit, let's talk about this guy. One reconnaissance unit can move and conduct reconnaissance of either a combat patrol or a terrain feature for a possible ambush or vice versa. And that's this rule is actually in the reconnaissance section, and we'll get into that. But the target must be within 14 inches, or 18 if you're using large figures, or 20 inches, or 24 inches if you're using large figures, if either, if either are elevated. Like this half track can perform a reconnaissance of that patch of woods as long as it's within 14 inches. Basically, they're looking over there trying to check out if they can see anything. Each reconnaissance section receiving this action makes a 1d6 reconnaissance roll. Apply a minus one if the section has any shock or is damaged, because you know vehicles can receive damage. A maximum of two attempts may be made by each platoon per order. So if you have a three or a four vehicle platoon, you don't make four rolls. You can make two, one per section that's active, up to two. Your opponent also rolls a d6 if, the, if your score exceeds or draws with the reconnaissance unit's modified score, then the reconnaissance has failed. So a, a tie goes to the defender. If the score is less than the reconnaissance score, then the combat patrol is removed or any ambush unit revealed. If I have a combat patrol, let's, let's say I've got an enemy combat patrol there, and my recon unit rolls up to there and wants to perform a reconnaissance action, I can perform it against the combat patrol. And if I get and I can do it twice if I got two vehicles. And if either one of those succeed, it kills the combat patrol. Basically, we saw you sneaking up. Now, let's say I did the reconnaissance on the woods. If there's an ambush unit in that woods, basically a hidden unit waiting to ambush, if it's in there, it has to be revealed. If there's nothing in the woods, you still roll the dice because your opponent doesn't know there's nothing in the woods. And if you succeed and if he succeeds, you just tell him there's nothing in the woods. But if you but if he fails, he still might or might not believe there might be something in the woods, so you just keep it secret. Mum's the word. All right, so that's reconnaissance. So you, your reconnaissance can deploy units or roll against a terrain feature or combat patrols. Okay, the next one is mortars. Most battalions have battalion mortars. I put them on the table. You don't have to. It costs two or one order. And I would just go ahead and put that on the mortar, or I'd just go ahead and put it on the mortar. The action brings the battalion mortars into action. Mortars can fire either HE or smoke. This action also activates a spotter. British, German, and U.S. battalion mortars require a company commander, or FO, or reconnaissance unit as a spotter with a line of sight to the target. All other battalions 
require an FO or reconnaissance unit. So basically, British, German, and U.S. can use company commanders as their spotter. Targeting a new aim point costs two orders. So let's say I used the battalion mortars over here last turn, but now I want to put the mortars over here. So now that's because it's a new target point, I have to spend two orders. But if I continue to fire over here, it would only cost one order. Basically, you're zeroing in. Restrictions. Battalion mortars may only fire once per turn. Yeah, so you can't just pile on orders. In a player's phase. So, in a player's phase. So, I can use mortars during your phase, or I can use it during my phase. Mortars cannot be requested if you requested artillery this turn. So, you can't do an artillery fire mission and mortars in the same turn. Or, if the mortars are low on ammunition. There is a roll, a result, that causes your mortars to be low on ammunition. And if that's the case, they can't be used. To replenish a battalion mortar ammunition, it only costs one order, and it cannot fire and be replenished in the same turn. So, let's say I fire the battalion mortars, I get a result of low on ammo, what I would do is I would mark them with some color, letting them know that they're low on ammo, and then on the following turn, I can issue them another order to remove the replenish, remove the low on ammo. Basically, they just get their ammo back again. All right, so that's the mortars. Okay, company commanders. Company commanders have a special order. Remember, I'm, I'm notating it with a yellow block. They have a special order, and it's cost, I'm sorry, special action, and it's cost in orders varies. It enables a steady company commander to issue a second action to an infantry, AFE, or gun section or section in the same phase by using his company commander order. This is your company commanders pushing the troops to keep moving and keep fighting. These orders are important as they permit units a second activation in the same phase. They can, however, prove expensive in terms of order cost. Each company commander may only issue one company commander order per turn. A company commander order can be for any action, including react actions, but cannot be mortars, or artillery. Restrictions. A company commander must be within 18 inches of a section of the unit receiving the action. So, I only have to measure 18 inches from the company commander to the closest section for him to be able to receive this platoon second order. And it must be attached to his company. So, he can't issue a company commander order to a company that, you know, A company can't issue orders to B company platoons. A company commander cannot be issued if his order has already been used earlier in this turn. Of course, because you only get one per turn. The cost of a company commander action is the standard order cost associated with the action plus any additional orders generated by the company commander. So, let's say he's already used an action to move. And I say, I want to use my company commander order to be able to use one of my company orders to push these guys along. At that point, you roll a d6, consult this chart, and if you are 1st rate battalion, or second rate battalion, you get uh, two different lines. If you roll a six, it doesn't cost anything extra. But if you roll, let's say your first rate, if you roll a one through a three, it costs two additional orders. Now, hypothetically, let's say you only had 
one order. Well, you can use this one order and then you can use one from your battalion. That would that would satisfy the two order cost. But let's say you didn't have any battalion orders and you and it costs two additional orders, but you only have one. If you have insufficient orders to pay the cost, the action fails and only costs that one order. Doesn't cost the extra. This action is available to the reacting player, enabling a second reaction. Is that pretty self-explanatory? I hope it was. So if the company commander, let's say this guy's already been given an order, and if this company commander decides I want to move them again or shoot them again, I would have to note that my company commander is using his special company commander ability. I spend one normally because that's what a move and fire order costs. Then I roll a die and I could get no extra orders and it would just perform the action. But I could get one extra order and then it, I could still perform the action. But if it required two extra orders, I would have to, in this case, dig into my battalion orders to satisfy the cost. And if you just don't have enough orders from anywhere, then you just keep, you still pay the one, but you don't have to pay the additional cost. Artillery. Now, artillery is not the same as mortars. It always costs two orders for artillery. A battalion requests artillery support, either HE or smoke. Artillery support may only be requested at the beginning of a player's combat phase. Now, it doesn't say that about mortars. Mortars can be issued at any time. But if you want to issue, but, but you can't issue mortars and artillery in the same turn. So, if you issue an order to, let's say... This infantry, now you're, now you're restricted to not using the artillery because it has to be used first thing. Now, you could just resort back to your battalion mortars. That's no problem. But at the start of the turn, if you want to use artillery, you have to do, it has to be the first action. Second-rate battalions may only request artillery if their HQ order total is five or more. So if you only have two orders, you can't even bother. You have to have at least a five on your battalion before you can even attempt an order for artillery. You decide which level of artillery support you're requesting. There's only two choices. It's regimental or divisional. Roll on the artillery support table, which we'll get into the artillery rules much later, to see if it's granted. If successful, it arrives immediately. Remember, you do one unit before you move on to the next unit. Same thing with artillery. Regimental artillery may fire either high explosive or smoke. Divisional artillery doesn't do that. It only fires high explosive, apparently. Okay, artillery requires on-table FO as a spotter with a line of sight to the intended target or target area. However, British and U.S. battalions from 1943 may use company commanders. So the British and the U.S. don't need an FO specifically. They can use their company commanders. Restriction. You cannot request artillery if you have already requested battalion mortar. I'm sorry, requested battalion mortars, or if you have no artillery missions left. Okay, so I have a, I have a, I have a model on the table, and these don't even have to be on the table. Your battalion mortars, I'm sorry, your regimental artillery or divisional artillery fire missions can be off table, but I put them on the table to remind me how many missions I have. 
And then when I do decide to fire an artillery mission, if it is successful and I, I'm able to call it and it lands, I take my fire mission off the table saying that it's already been used. And then basically you're limited on how many fire missions you have per game. Okay, the next order or action is consolidation. It costs one order if on an objective or costs two orders if on any other position. Okay, so what that basically means is at the start of the game, you as the probably the attacker, the attacker or the defender, you decide what the objectives are. I might want it to be this field, or I might want it to be this woods, or whatever. Uh, this, this spot in the middle of the road, I want that to be the objective. And if I decide to choose the, the objective as my consolidation point, it only costs one point. But if I say, F it, I don't care about the objective, I'm going to deploy or consolidate in this field, then it's going to cost two points. This action permits a player to bring on his reserves and consolidate on a forward position or objective. If deploying onto a captured objective or planned deployment position, this costs one order. So remember, you have to have captured it already. If deploying onto any other captured or occupied terrain feature, this is not initially declared as a phase line objective or deployment position, then it will cost two points. Now remember, to use the consolidation action, it has to be somewhere you've already captured in both cases. Infantry. Deploy a reserve infantry company commander directly on or behind a captured objective. If this intersection had been captured already and these infantry, this infantry platoon has already bypassed it, and let's say, so this is a captured spot, I can deploy my company commander on the objective or behind it, okay? So if I wanted to deploy, because sometimes it'll be a building and you don't necessarily want to put your company commander in the building. You might want to put it hidden behind the building. Same thing with the woods. If we capture the woods, I don't have to put the company commander in the woods. I could put it behind. And when it's talking about behind, it means towards you, not behind like on the far side. Such as a built up area, woods or hill. The objective must be clear of enemy units and combat patrols. This company commander may then immediately deploy up to two combat patrols within eight inches or 10 inches of using large figures. This is free and doesn't cost any additional order costs. So the company commander gets deployed. Then I take two combat patrols and deploy them immediately within eight inches. Now, if it was armor, deploy one AFV platoon or section directly on or behind the captured objective or occupied terrain feature that has a road or track connection from your table edge. If there is no road or track, you cannot use AFV consolidation. So, at the beginning of the game, if you're planning on bringing in tanks using consolidation, you need to make sure that the objective that you are choosing to be to be the consolidation point has a road going through it. Opportunity fire. The player indicates the route taken by the AFE unit. So you just say, well, my tanks drive down this road and then they consolidate there. And the opponent may opportunity fire as normal at any point. So if they have a hidden anti-tank gun or something and they, let's say there's a big hill right there, 
but they can see back here. They can decide to shoot at you as you pass here before you get to the hidden position. Restriction. The infantry company being deployed must be entirely in reserve with no units already committed. So I can't have my company commander and whatever combat patrols in reserve if I've already taken maybe Charlie Company's infantry platoon and moved it on from the table edge because now it's not, it, not in its entirety. All right, let's talk about reserves. It's another action. It costs two orders, two orders for reserves. Deploy up to two reserve platoons from the same company on the table edge and issue a rapid move action using the total of all dice scores for movement. We'll get into movement here in a moment. Or deploy reserve armor. Reserve AFE supports, including motorized infantry, may be reassigned to a new company with this action. This overrides the rigid reserves doctrine. Redeployed supports may not deploy on table this turn. Okay, so if I have a tank, the tank is considered a divisional support element. It is not its own company unless you're deploying armored battalions, but that's in a that's a that's a supplemental rule. So it has if you have flexible reserves, then this doesn't matter. This can be just sitting on your reserve tray and bring it in whenever you want. But if you have rigid reserves, you might have had to deploy it with Bravo Company. But you, you realize you need it to be an Alpha Company because they're making a push and they need that armor. You can use a reserves order. Remember, it costs two orders. And then you can move this into Alpha Company, but it can't come onto the table that same turn. All right, that's reserves. Rear guard. Rear guard costs three orders. Super expensive. And a company commander order. Used once only in a game. One company may withdraw all, some, or none of its units to D6. And, or rally, each unit with three D6. So basically, you can have them all fall back two dice, and rally three dice. Units may withdraw or rally in any order. No other actions may be issued to any company units in this phase. All on-table company units are classed as having received this order in this phase. So if I've got a bunch of platoons out there and they've taken se severe damage and I don't have enough actions or I feel like I can issue one action, which is called rear guard, cost three action, three orders, and the company commander order. They'll fall back 2d6, and their rally, every every unit that you move back will rally, well, every unit, period, will rally three dice. But it can only be used once in a game. Okay. React fire. React Fire costs one action, and it can be either React or Opportunity. Now, to make this real easy to understand, to React, you wait for the current unit to finish his action. So if he says, I'm going to issue an order, and I'm going to move and fire, and he does. Let's say he moves up a little bit, and then he fires. Once he's done his action, then you place an action on your reacting unit, and you fire back. And the other one is called opportunity fire. You can attempt to fire at some time during his movement. So if he decides to move up, then shoot, 
you can fire at him during that move section, uh, that move um, portion of his move and fire. If he decides to fire and sh then move, you have to wait till sometime during his movement to fire. Um, you have to roll the die to see if you can interrupt him. Heavy weapons, guns, or open-topped AFVs are successful on a 3+, plus, which is actually better than 50%. If infantry, tanks, or enclosed tank destroyers are included or issuing this opportunity fire, then you have to roll a 4+, plus to be successful. If you're successful, you can fire at them at any point during their move. If you fail, you have to wait till they finish their move and finish their shooting if they're moving and shooting basically you have to it basically converts it into a regular react order where you have to finish you have to shoot at them when they're done it uses the normal firing rules such as line of sight arc of fire and range there is an exception if they get within close range which is six inches for a infantry or nine inches if you're using larger figures, you automatically, without a roll, get to fire. Close range supporting unit. A unit within three inches of the initial unit that is being close assaulted, not just moving and firing. If it's being close assaulted, and you're not the unit being close assaulted, but you're within three inches of the unit that is being close assaulted, you can spend an action and fire, or spend an order and fire. If you have a unit that is in ambush, like it's off table in the woods or whatever, uh, you can place this order on them and they'd be allowed to fire with the same die rolls. Now there is a restriction. A reacting unit cannot pivot or turn a turret when using react or opportunity fire. Okay, there is something called react withdraw. It's a one order action and you could do uh, a withdraw. So one steady or hesitant unit can withdraw 2d6 after an enemy unit has finished its current move or fire actions and includes withdrawing after a mortar artillery attack. So if you were a unit, you were in a beaten zone of artillery and you got shot at, at the end you can do a react, withdraw, fall back 2d6 and hopefully get out of the beaten zone because now artillery can be called in that same spot for only one action instead of two. If you're suppressed, you roll a die, and if you roll a four or more, you can withdraw. If you roll a one to three, you cannot withdraw. But again, you still had to place that order before you rolled the die. If you wind up being in close combat and you want to withdraw, you roll a d6, and on a four or more, you withdraw, just like a withdrawing with a suppressed unit. Uh, and you, re you withdraw 2d6. But because you were in close combat, you receive one shock. And on a 1 to 3, meaning you failed to withdraw, you just sit there. But you may use opportunity fire. Now, heavy guns, 75 millimeter or larger, cannot withdraw from close combat. AFVs cannot withdraw from close combat unless they're reconnaissance. Units cannot move closer to an enemy unit in line of sight, but are free to retire or pivot even if a pivot move takes the unit marginally closer to the enemy. 
And my example on that is if you've got an anti-tank gun, right, and it's longer than it is wide, and if you have to pivot, it might put you uh, like a half inch closer to the enemy. Don't worry about it. Okay, react actions. This is kind of a reiteration of the react. The reacting player may issue one react action in response to an enemy move or fire action. Either react fire or react withdraw. They can also use a company commander action to issue a second react fire or withdraw action in the same phase. Important bullet points. You can only react against the enemy unit that has just received an action and is in line of sight of your reacting unit. You cannot react against any other units that may be in line of sight or in fire arc. For example, if your opponent issues a move and fire action to a tiger tank, this is the only target that you may react against, even if you have other targets that may have moved or either fired earlier in the turn. So you have to do it like right after it happens. You can only react to enemy fire or movement. So if the player had issued a rally action to the tiger, you could not react as there is no firing or movement to react to. Orders are required to react. If you have no remaining orders, either company or battalion headquarters, then you can't react. All right, so that's the end of the actions chapter, chapter eight. And we'll be going into chapter nine and 10 in the next video, which is movement and terrain. Because this first video went on very long and used up my entire disk space, I figured it would be better to break the video up into a smaller chunk. I'm going to edit as much as I can, but when, but in the next video, we're going to do movement and terrain. And I think that's a better mix because movement is usually impacted by different types of terrain. All right. So come back and check out the next video and I will see you in the next one.